New Year, everybody. I'm Yuki Takura. You're listening to the Miki Mile. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I know it's been quite some time since I put up something, and I feel I owe you guys an explanation. I'm going to take care of that before I do my usual shout-outs and get on to my, uh, get on to my point today. Um, by the way, I'm going let to you, let you guys know right now I'm going to be talking Tim Tebow and Denver Broncos football. Um, so what happened was, after I put up my last video, you know, back in July, um, I ran into a few snags, not the least of which being I found out I was going to be getting a roommate, and as a result, uh, I had to go through a move. Another one. And I found out that transferring apartments is a whole lot tougher than transferring apartment complexes. It took up a lot of time, a lot of energy, and about that time, I started working longer hours at work. And because of that, I just haven't had the energy to really do any sort of research and uh, in doing so put up anything. Because, to be honest, I, I've been told that my trademark has always been my energy. And the fact that I, I, I'm not like Vice Commando and boring, you can't hear him. So, I, I feel that if I don't have the energy, I can't do it. But something happened while I was out, and it gives me all the motivation in the world to make my New Year's resolution get back into this. Um, that goes into a couple of changes you're, uh, you're going to be seeing for the Miyuki Mile. Now, Let's Play is almost unaffected. Um, as a matter of fact, the, um, the recent development uh, through Google and AdSense uh, may actually end up helping Let's Play. Um, yeah, AdSense. I, I'm sure you noticed the advertisement at the beginning of this video. Um, that That's probably the biggest reason uh, behind this. Basically, I know you guys don't like advertisements. I don't, I don't know a single person that does outside of the companies that advertise. But the problem is, if I'm going to turn this into my career, which in the end I'd like to, that's going to be how I do it. It sucks, I know, but... Unfortunately, that's that's how that's how I've got to do it. So I'm sure you noticed that. Um, also, you're going to be noticing that the um, the video game footage over the course of the Miyuki Mile and the song at the very end are gone. That's actually because of copyrights. Now that I'm now that I'm nursing this to become my career, I actually have to watch what I do. So unfortunately, those got to go. Um, but I am going to start looking into a webcam to give you guys something to look at. As of now, you're, uh, you're going to be looking at some title sequences through Windows Movie Maker that add in some facts that I don't talk about. Um, so it'll give you something to read, but again, I know it's, not, I know it's a pretty big downgrade. I will be working on that. Also, at the very end, I'm going to be bringing back something I used to do for a friend of mine. It's going to be called Worthless Trivia. Now, whether or not it's about my talking point doesn't matter. It's basically going to be trivia that you don't use in your real life, but will actually make you look a little smarter. So, that, that's, th those are pretty much the biggest changes um, to the Miyuki Mile. Now, the shoutouts aren't leaving. However, I'm not really going to tell you a whole lot about them because of these title sequences. I'll tell you a little bit of, about the, uh, the shoutouts um, over the course of these title sequences. So, first off, I would like to welcome Hog Wild to the Mugi Boat. Uh, M -E -O -T -T Johnson, uh, Justin, I know I completely butchered that name. M-E-O-T-T -T Justin. Uh, Ivana, uh, Ivana Georgina, welcome to the Mugi Boat. Tommy Troops. Mega Mario 48 and Top Axle 411. Thank you, uh, thank you for clicking that button. Welcome to the Miyuki Boat. Now, today's mile, I'm expecting a lot of Tebowites to look at me and tell me that I'm wrong. All right. Now, just so you guys know, I've actually done a lot of research on this. My uh, my source of research is actually ProFootballReference.com, and what I found is Tim Tebow. Denver Broncos quarterback, by the way, has grown immensely popular uh, over the course of the last year or so since he was drafted by the Broncos in the first round. I think it was the 22nd pick in the 2011 NFL Draft. 2010. 
in the 2010 NFL draft, he was the second first round pick for the Denver Broncos, uh, picked by Josh McDaniels uh, from Florida. Um, since then, he, he has become immensely popular, really open about his Christianity religion, but a, a lot of people are saying he's the end-all, be-all to the Denver Broncos. I got to tell you, from the stats that I've looked up, if Tim Tebow is the end-all, be-all right now, if Tim Tebow is the end-all, be-all to the Denver Broncos, they've got some major problems. Okay, now, one of the biggest things that, uh, that, I, uh, that I'm looking at is completion percentage. Now, I know that completion percentage almost means nothing to a quarterback because, you know, if, if you can complete a pass for a good several yards, the fact of the matter is your offense is in good shape. But there's a problem with that. The, he the head coach, John Fox, of the, uh, of the Denver Broncos, was actually the head coach for the Carolina Panthers, by the way, and he has always been a running, court a running coach. Well, in a running style of offense, which, by the way, the Denver Broncos are very run-heavy, your main source of offense isn't necessarily your passing game. All right, and this is actually very uh, evident in Tim Tebow's completion percentage. In his first 353 pass attempts, Tim Tebow has a 47.3% completion percentage. Yeah, he has 15 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Could easily have been 10, by the way. There was actually a play in the Buffalo Bills game. It was week 16, the Denver Broncos ended up losing. And supposedly, it, it was a pick six, an interception return for a touchdown. Well, that ended up uh, getting overturned and turned into a fumble return for a touchdown. Well, and, and, you know, honestly, I have no problem with that. But the problem is, Tim Tebow just can't complete a pass. That's why I'm saying that he's not the end-all, be-all to the Denver Broncos right now. Now, Tim Tebow is one to do what he says he's going to do. And he's already said that he's going to learn how to be an NFL quarterback. If he can get some coaching and work on his accuracy, and I do, I do have a... a, a, a um. A comparison in that front to tell you uh, to let you know where I'm coming from. Um, look out for the Denver Broncos. Okay, I, I'm going to tell you all right now. Look out for the Denver Broncos if he learns how to become an NFL quarterback. But there's a problem. His 47% completion percentage is actually 47 from last year, by the way, is actually the worst that we've seen for a quarterback, even in his first year. I'll give him that. He's in his first full year as an NFL starter, but it's still the worst that we've seen since 1998 when Ryan Leaf... Yes, I just made the comparison between Tim Tebow and Ryan Leaf through 45.5% completion percentage. Now, granted, Tim Tebow did throw for, uh, for about 1,600 yards. Ryan Leaf threw for about 1,100. I'll give you that. But the fact of the matter is, for a running offense, there are three stats that you really want to look for. All right? Completion percentage, which in, uh, in my comparison, I use Jake DeLome. Yeah, I know it's fucking Jake DeLome. He's an established quarterback. However, for all of these comparisons, I tried to get as close to 360 passes as I could. Okay? Jake DeLome. He, he passed under the very same um, John Fox system that Tim Tebow's passing under. Jamarcus Russell, Quincy Carter, Joey Harrington, Akili Smith, and Ryan Leaf. The only quarterbacks still in the league from that list are Tim Tebow and Jake DeLone. Okay? Now, in their first 360 passes, I will give you that Akili Smith has a worse completion percentage than Tim Tebow. But you got to remember, in his first full season as a starter, Akili Smith did complete about 52% of his passes. And outside of Ryan Leaf and uh, Ryan Leaf and Akili Smith are the two worst, Tim Tebow is the third worst, which means Jamarcus Russell did better than Tim Tebow. Jake DeLone, by the way, did the best. He completed 58% of his passes in his first 360 attempts. Jamarcus Russell did better than Tim Tebow. Quincy Carter did better. Joey Harrington did better than Tim Tebow. That's not necessarily a good list to be under. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. As a quarterback, that is not necessarily a good list to be under. 
Now, I know it sounds like I'm a Tim Tebow hater because of this. By the way, yards per attempt, Tim Tebow actually did come in second behind Jake DeLome. All right, I will give you that. He did. All right, and in terms of interceptions or lack thereof, Tim Tebow actually did the best. Throwing nine interceptions. Everybody else had at least ten. Uh, Jake DeLome actually had eleven in that point in time. So I will give you that. However, there is a problem. A lot of people are complaining about the play calling style behind uh, behind John Fox and how he's uh, how he constantly calls for run, 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 quarterback run, run, quarterback run, 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 pass, run. Run, quarterback run, run, pass, quarterback run, quarterback run, run. Yeah, it's a very conservative style. However, these complainers don't necessarily realize that it's the very same conservative play calling style that got the Panthers to the Super Bowl in the first place. Now, granted, again, they had Jake DeLome and Steve Smith. However, they only passed when they needed to. All right, the same thing with the Broncos. They only pass when they need to. The problem is Tim Tebow can't complete a pass. Okay, in his first 353 attempts, he's completing 47.3% of his passes. That's not a good completion percentage. And again, I'll give you, I'm paying a lot of attention to that stat. However, in a running style of offense, that is probably the biggest stat that you need to pay attention to. Because if you're not completing at least 52 to 55% of your passes in a run style of offense, defenses don't need to give you the pass. Or they, they don't need to defend the pass. They can actually... Just uh, They can defend the run. Yeah, they'll get burned if there's a completed pass, but they know that they can leave a receiver open and Tim Tebow won't get them the ball. Now, does that mean he's a draft bust? Fuck no. You know, if they can coach him up and work on his accuracy, look for the Broncos to be a Super Bowl-style team. Okay, that's probably the biggest thing the Broncos are missing right now. Pass accuracy. All right, I don't care if he if he doesn't if he if his um, yards per attempt isn't that great. By the way, you're talking about 7.0 for Jake Delhomme. You got uh, 6.8 for Tim Tebow, and then it's a pretty big drop off from there. Jamarcus Russell is actually number three at 6.1. I don't care if they if he completes. His passes for such a short uh, short yardage that he matches Achilles Smith at 5.0 in that very same uh, very same time frame. I really don't care. The fact of the matter is that if he can complete a, his passes, then defenses are guard, are defending the run, and his receivers are behind the defenders. They'll go for a really long, uh, really big game. But the problem is. Completing that pass. It's getting there. Tim Tebow is not there yet. All right. Now, I'm sure a lot of Tebowites are asking, well, if that's the case, if he's such a bad quarterback, how are the Broncos winning? They did go on, a, I do believe it was a six-game winning streak when Tim Tebow took over. Well, you also got to look at the one, and I say one, and I only mean one, on-field natural talent that Tim Tebow has. He tears the prevent defense to shreds. Now, I know a lot of Tebow haters are going to say, well, it's a fucking prevent defense. The, pre the prevent defense prevents you from winning. Not necessarily. The prevent defense is actually, uh, is actually there to prevent long passes. Okay? They give the offense the short pass in the middle of the field. And if, it, if an offense has no timeouts and are trailing... The prevent defense is actually their worst nightmare. Okay? The fact of the matter is, if you go back to the Chicago Bears game, Tim Tebow tore the prevent defense to shreds. Now, granted, there was an early Christmas, uh, Christmas present to the Broncos and Bronco fans, compliments of Marion Barber. But he tore that prevent defense to shreds. That's a talent that you really want at the quarterback position. Okay, it tells me that he's able to, to find open receivers. But the problem is, if he's in a rush, he can't do so. And one thing that I, I, I was talking to somebody that I work with, and 
He says that the biggest problem with Tim Tebow is his windup. Okay, I'll give you that. He's got good arm strength. And his windup doesn't necessarily help his accuracy any. But again, it, it takes me back to work on your accuracy and keep that talent of being able to tear the de prevent defense to shreds and the Broncos can actually do something. They made the playoffs as an 8-8 eight and eight team, winning the AFC West. Now granted, last year we had a 7-9 and nine team winning the NFC West and winning a playoff game. The Seattle Seahawks beat the Super Bowl champion uh, uh, New Orleans Saints. So, it can't happen. It all starts with Tim Tebow, though. And, again, I know a lot of people are going to complain about the play calling and how the play calling cost them two games, one against the Buffalo Bills, one against the Kansas City Chiefs. Very conservative play calling style, I'll give you that. But there's two reasons that's not changing. One, Tim Tebow. As already stated many times before, he can't complete a pass. So, the Denver Broncos don't have any confidence in him. But then again, how can you have confidence in your quarterback if he goes 6 for 26 for 60 yards? How can you have confidence in that kind of quarterback? The second reason that's not changing is John Fox. He's always been a run-heavy uh, run coach. Why this is a big surprise to Bronco fans is beyond me. Okay, if you did your homework, you would see that he runs about 55 to 60 percent of the time, normally. Okay, now again, the ratio was about 65 to 70 percent run this year, but that also goes back to the ineptitude of Tim Tebow. Now, am I a Tebow hater? I would say no, because again, he's got to learn the position. The Broncos aren't going to make it in the playoffs unless Tim Tebow learns the position. And you, you also got to realize where he came from. He was drafted by Josh McDaniels, a coach that only kept him away from, that only drafted him to keep him away, away from the Buffalo Bills. Okay? He didn't give two shits about anything. Alright? And here he is saying, all we're trying to do is win a motherfucking game. No, seriously, he said that on national TV. <laughs> and. He then comes under John, uh, his next coach was Eric Studisville, an interim coach, a running backs coach, by the way. Then John Fox, a run-heavy style coach, so he hasn't had the ability to, to learn the position. If John Fox teaches him the position, you know, look out. Hello world, we're here again, living life in Bronco land. Again, all he needs to do is learn the position. And John Fox? has never been a, a passing coach. So really, this isn't, this isn't such a big surprise. To Tebow haters, I would say lay off. Let's give the guy a couple of years. Let's give him a full 16 game season to see what he can do. Just remember, he hasn't had a full 16 game season yet as a starter. He started, I do believe, he didn't start at all in his rookie year in 2010. And he, out of the 13 games that he played, he only started 10. Let's give him a full 16 to see what he's, uh, what he's at. And to Tebow White's out there, people that are saying, well, you're just a Tebow hater. You know, stop fucking trolling for unicorns. You know, all that crap. I would say, lay off. The stats aren't there. Let's see what he can do. Okay. Tim Tebow is not the end-all, be-all to the Broncos yet. With some good coaching, he can be. And I say he will be. With some good coaching, I'm also inducting him into the Hall of Fame. But again, that all depends on the coaching. The Broncos coaches are going to earn their money. They're either going to earn their money or they're going to be looking for new jobs with the Broncos. There's no middle ground here. It's, it's not like, oh, say, the Buffalo Bills. You have no middle ground here. They're either going to earn their money or they're looking for new jobs. So this offseason and next season are going to be very interesting for Tebowites, for Tebow haters, for even Bronco fans. And to be honest, I'm a diehard Buffalo Bills fan. Diehard Buffalo Bills fan. And even I'm saying it's going to be interesting. 
So let's give the guy a little time. Let's see what he's like. So, closing out today, a little worthless trivia. Now, for those, of, for those of you that are Final Fantasy fans, you probably know the name Ted Woolsey. What you guys probably didn't know about Ted Woolsey, who, by the way, came out of Washington State and immediately uh, translated one of, one of the best games in gaming history, a game by the name of Final Fantasy VI. That was actually his first trans, uh, translation job. What people might not know is Ted Woolsey was actually the lead translator to a Mario game. Surprise, surprise. Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Silver Stars, as childish as it was, was actually translated by Ted Woolsey. And for a while, Ted Woolsey was actually a, uh, a, a programmer to Xbox Live. Uh, I don't necessarily remember what he's doing right now, but, you know, now you know. Ted Woolsey, uh, Ted Woolsey Final Fantasy Extraordinaire, translated a Mario game. This has been today's Miyuki Mile. I will see you all on the other side. Hasta lasagna.